Welcome to an enlightening podcast from IslamPodcasts.com. We encourage our listeners to please comment and let us know how we can grow in our knowledge to better serve our community. Please remind your family and friends to also visit IslamPodcasts.com for engaging discussions on current events, Islamic guidance, Quran, Tafsir, Sira, and much more. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillah Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa nukminu bihi wa natadakkalu alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina min yahdi allahu fala mudilla lah wa min yudlihu fala hadiya lah wa nashhadu an la ilaha illa allahu wa ahtahu la sharika lah wa nashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu arsalahu bashiran wa nadira bayna yadayi sa'a من يطيع الله ورسوله فقد رشد واهتدى ومن يعصهما فإنه قد غوى وإنه لا يضر إلا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا إن خير الحديث كتاب الله إن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحديث حديث محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن خير الأمور عوازمها وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدث بدع وكل دلاله كل بدع دلاله وكل دلاله في النار اما بعد وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وقال سبحانه وتعالى في مكان ثاني يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله قولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطيع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما صدق الله العظيم Before I will talk about the khutbah today just want to remind all who are present here that in when the khutbah for the Jumu'ah is going on we should not be talking to each other during the Salatul Jumu'ah and even if somebody says salam do not respond back to salam during the Salat of Jumu'ah. So, uh, the little khutbah time even. And that's one of the commands from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's, a, it's an important part about the khutbah that we should be listening to it quietly and do not interrupt and talk to each other during the khutbah. Now, when it comes to the topic today, inshallah, I will talk about a very important topic which is dear to all of us and it has a great importance for all of us which is the role of the scholars and their importance a lot of time we are aware of the importance and role but we could exceed the limits that we should not be exceeding and uh, as I said in the beginning the importance of the scholar has a huge impact on our lives. As Allah Azza wa Jal asks the believers, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَتَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people who have the ilm, who have the, who have the, who have the knowledge, if you do not know. So we are commanded by Allah Azza wa Jal to ask the people who are of the people of knowledge if we are unaware of certain subjects. Same way, when we talk about the knowledge, knowledge about the deen specifically, because the knowledge is of different kinds, when we talk about the knowledge of the deen, this especially about the one that relates to our actions, it is for the ilm on us. It is a wajib for each and every one of us to seek knowledge about the actions that we are undertaking. <coughs> the other aspects of the knowledge which we are not dealing with, that's for the kifaya which is by sufficiency you have to have enough people who are aware of the knowledge and the regular knowledge about the rest of it it has also come under the category of which is the, the form or the obligation of sufficiency or kifaya now for that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentioned about what he has left from the knowledge of deen for us he said taraktu fikum amrayni لَن تَدِلُّ مَا تَمَسَّكُمْ بِهِمَا كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وَسُنَّةَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ Rasulullah said, I am leaving two things 
behind you. Whoever holds on to those two things will not be misguided. And those two things, two things are Kitab Allah, which is the Quran, and the Sunnah of, sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when it comes to just to understand the scholars or the people who have knowledge or the one who are seeking knowledge, the importance in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let's pay attention to some of the ahadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Two, two people were mentioned in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One, a scholar, alim, and second, an abid, a worshipper. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talked about those two people. He said, فَضْلُ العالم على العابد كفضل على أدناكم. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the, uh, the fadl or the superiority of a scholar over the people uh, is like my superiority over the lowest among you. So superiority of an alim over the abid or the worshipper. That this much of a superiority a person who has a knowledge has. And similarly, there are other hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talks about, and I will just touch some of them so we have an idea regarding the importance of them. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said one of the hadith, a single learned Muslim is harder on the shaitan than a thousand worshippers. Similarly, another hadith says, whoever travels in the path seeking the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes him easy the path of the Jannah. Another hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that angels lower their wings for the seeker of the knowledge out of pleasure in what he seeks. And those in the heavens and the earth and the very fish in the water tank, in the water, ask Allah to forgive the person and do the sacred knowledge. And there are many a hadith on this subject that tells us the importance of a person who has knowledge. Similarly, another hadith says that the ulama are the inheritors of the anbiya. The scholars of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are the inheritors of the prophets. Prophets do not leave anything else. They leave the knowledge behind them. And whoever goes and get that knowledge, he is the one who is the successful one. Now, having said all that, and we are commanded to go to the scholars if we are unaware of a subject, we should also understand that there are limits when it comes to the following a scholar. And one of the key aspects <coughs> about the scholars Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran is إِنَّ مَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ يَبْعَدِهِ عُلَمَاء Indeed, the one talking about the ulama, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, are the one who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Among the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who are the ulama, the scholars, the one who carry the knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are the one who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, this does not say how many years you have spent seeking the knowledge, how many degrees that you carry, rather it's the fear of Allah azza wa jal. It's the yaksha Allah, khashiyat Allah. That's the thing that makes a person a scholar. If the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not there, and you can have tons and tons of knowledge, it will be useless. When it comes to knowledge, probably shaitan has more knowledge than any, any one of us here. That does not make him successful. Because he disobeyed Allah azza wa jal. And he continued to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by misguiding the people. Now, when it comes to the ulama, I see a trend, this is why I thought this is very important for us to also understand, yes, the knowledge of the ones that one, you should go. But at the same time, there are limitations for following a scholar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Tawbah, اِتَّخَذُوا أَحْبَارَهُمْ وَرَبَّانَهُمْ وَرَبَّانَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they took their ahbar, rabbis, and rahban, the monk, the one who worship as their arbab, as their lords, as their rahm. And when it's talking about the, them, of course, they're talking about the Yahud and Nasara here. And Ali bin Hatim, who was a non-Muslim, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was reciting these ayat. And uh, Ibn Kathir mentions, 
when he was talking to Rasulullah sallallahu about this ayah, he has a cross hanging around his neck that shows he was a Christian at that time. And he asked Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, we did not make them as our rabbis and monks as our lords, as our arbab, as our rab. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, did you accept whatever they said halal is halal and whatever they made it as haram is haram? He said yes. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that's what it means by making them as your Rabb and you are worshipping them now. Because when we go to a scholar, an alim, to seek the knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are asking him what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us? Our inquiry to an alim is not what he wishes or what the circle of friends of his wish for the people to follow. Rather, we are asking him or them or even her that what is what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us in the specific action that we want to undertake or that issue that we are asking about. What is the say of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about that? That's what the alim is there for. When the prophets are leaving the knowledge, this is the knowledge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even the prophets do not make up the knowledge of their own. They were directed by the wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the scholar who has a lot of importance in Islam, because of they carry the knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that very same knowledge makes them fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is supposed to be feared. But at the same time, when we go to, to them, to the ulama, to scholars, to seek knowledge about any subject, let's make sure we understand. We are seeking knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, we may not sometimes understand the evidences and a scholar, a scholar provides to us. That's fine. We should work towards it so we will be able to understand the evidences presented to us. But at the end of the day, we are accountable in front of Allah Azza wa Jal if we follow Allah or not. So we can have a trust in a scholar that he gives us the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence we are following him. We're not following him because how long of a beard he has, or how big of a jubda or the fob he wears, or how high it is from the ankles, or how big of a kufi or turbush or whatever he's wearing on his head. This is not why we follow a scholar. The scholar is followed because he's providing us the ilm, the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's the knowledge that's supposed to be followed. And now the question comes in, as in the following ayah, in Surah Tawbah, I'll talk about that and inshallah, I'll get to the subject as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues on <coughs> in Surah Tawbah, in, in, in verse number 34, it says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amun, inna kathiran min al-ahbari wa ruhbani, Subhanallah. Allah says, O you who believe, there are many among the rabbis and the monks. They eat the wealth of the people. And they put the barriers in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَصُدُّونَ عَنْ سَبِيلَ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ يَكْنِذُونَ الذَّهَبَ وَالْفِدَّةِ وَلَا يُنْفِقُونَهَا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَبَشِّرُهُمْ بِعَذَابٍ عَلِيمٍ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is another category of people. The people who have wealth, the one who are hoarding gold and silver, and they do not spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, <coughs> To all these three categories Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about. The one who is eating the wealth of the people because of their knowledge. They put in the berries in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they're holding wealth. What, who are these three people? This is interesting to know. These three categories of the people, are the one who are really the movers and shakers of a society. These are the movers and shakers. They do something, things happen. The one who are scholars and those worshippers, they carry their spiritual and intellectual wealth to control the people. People follow them. And the one who are holding the wealth, those elites and the rich, they have the material power. And when these people are good, the society becomes good. When they are bad, they become the source of misguidance for the others as well. Now, the point is, why am I talking about the people who are the Yahud and Nasara? Ahbar, rabbis, and the monks we are talking about. Why are we talking about them? The knowledgeable people, the worshippers, and the one who carries the wealth. 
The reason is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran many qasas, many stories of the previous people. And the purpose of the stories is so we get the ibrah, we get, get the lesson out of it. And majority of those stories are from Bani Israel. Majority of the stories mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when we talk about the previous people, are Musa alayhi wa stories, filled with Musa alayhi wa stories in the Quran, about Bani Israel, or Haman, or Qarun, or Isa alayhi wa and the people, the children of Yaqub alayhi wa sallam, different prophets are mentioned and the nations are mentioned. Why are those stories mentioned the most? That is because we as the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have been warned, have been warned about those previous nations that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that my people will follow the previous nations inch by inch, hand span by hand span and if they go into a lizard hole, they will follow it. And it was asked by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are you talking about Yahud and Nasara? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, who else? Who else? Meaning, yes, he was talking about them. So there is a warning for us that we do not get onto this very same footsteps and we start following the scholars or the worshippers or even the one who has the material world blindly. It's not that Islam prohibits us to follow. Islam allows us places Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us, go ask the people who have the knowledge. We've been asked, Obey Allah and His Messenger and the one who has authority. But at the same time, if you have a conflict, then if you have a conflict, go back to Allah and His Messenger. It's not that you stick with your shaykh, you stick with the scholar, whoever it is, I am standing here. If I am talking about anything, you should be asking me what is the evidence of that if I am saying something does not make sense. Sense from the perspective of Quran and Sunnah, not my intellect. It should be about if anything in any member or any anywhere has been said which contradicts Quran and the Sunnah, the essence of the Quran and Sunnah, we should be questioning them. At the end of the day, we are accountable. We are also accountable for the people who get to the member and give the khutb. Adinu nasiha, billahi wa rasulullah sallam said, the deen is a nasiha, it is an advice. And was asked to whom? Lillahu wa rasuli wa li kitabi to Allah and His Messenger and His Book. And then, A'imma, A'imma also. A'imma who? That the leaders, whether they are scholars or leaders, and A'immatul Muslimin, and it is advice for the people, regular people as well. When it comes to Allah and His Messenger and His Book, it means we seek guidance, we seek advice from Allah and His Messenger and His Book. When it comes to A'imma and A'immatul Muslimin, we provide our advice to them as well. And this is part of an obligation on the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to always be keen about to remember the obligation of enjoining the good and forbidding the evil. It's not a recommendation for us that when you feel like then you are the one who should be doing the job of enjoining the good and forbidding the evil. No matter where the munkar is, Man ra'a minkum al munkara, al yugayyib yadi. Whosoever sees a munkar, then he should change it with his hand. Why not yesterday? And he does not have the istidaa, does not have the capability of changing that munkar, that evil. Then for the lisani, then with your tongue. Why not yesterday? And if you don't have the istidaa, the capability of changing that evil with your hand, then do with your tongue. And even if you cannot do with your tongue, then it is in your heart that you feel bad about the munkar or the evil is happening. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that this is the lowest level of the iman that you are just feeling bad in your heart. Can you imagine that munkar or evil is happening around us? We don't even feel bad about it. Which state we are putting ourselves in? We should be questioning ourselves, do I even have iman now left? That the evil is happening and I don't stop. So that goes to even when it comes to the scholar, scholarly work also. This member, when people get up and give the khutbah, it is like the member Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa used to give the khutbah for the member. If we should be thinking of it, should be whatever has been said here has to be according to the Quran and the Sunnah. It has to be from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And if it's not like that, then we should be helping those brothers who are getting up and talking to make sure that we are helping each other to enter into Jannah as well. That's the job. So when we talk about the scholars, the scholars have huge respect in Islam. They are the one who are the inheritors of the ulama. At the same time, my brothers and sisters have this, do remember that, that that does not mean by any means that we start following them blindly to the point when they are giving us something that contradicts the Quran and the Sunnah just because of our attachment to a scholar. We are not willing to take the Quran and the Sunnah which is presented to you. It has to be always in the back of our mind all the time that we are supposed to be the one who are worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal and that's the only way to be successful in this dunya and in the akhir. وَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ لِيُوَرِكُمْ وَلِلْسَعَى الْمُسْلِمِ فَاسْتَغْفِرُهُ إِنَّهُ وَقُلُ الرَّحِيمِ That's Allah for the peace. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الأمين أما بعد فيا معشر المسلمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أيد الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أنصر من نصر دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وجعلنا منهم واخذل من قدل دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا تجعلنا منهم اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم ثبتنا على الإسلام اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور الإيمان اللهم فل المؤمنين والمؤمنات عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يعمل بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء الضربة وينع الفاحشة والمنكر والبغي نعذكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله يذكركم وَلَهُ يَسْجُدُ لَكُمْ وَلَذِكْرُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى أَعْلَى وَأَوْلَى وَعَزُّ وَجَلُّ وَتَمُّ وَهَمُّ وَأَكْبَرُ وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ Thank you for listening to this podcast. Podcasts on current events, Islamic guidance, Quran tafsir, and seerah are available at islampodcasts.com as well as on iTunes. Rate, review, and comment, and let us know how we can grow in our knowledge to better serve our community. Please subscribe, share, and tell a friend about IslamPodcast.com.